Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're gonna have a look at how we create the short type animation in Final Cut Pro. Now, we're not gonna be using any keyframes, we're gonna be using only the built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro, and also along with that, we're gonna be having a look at how we can use some of the symbols and emojis to actually add a little bit of flavor to our type animations. So let's dive in and begin to look at how we do this. So I have a short section of video that we're gonna overlay our type onto in the second half of this video. And we're gonna start from scratch here. We're gonna add things that you can see in this first section, such as the color treatment in the background, the stars. We're gonna have a look at how we create those, and then also have a look at how we create our animated text. So let's begin, first of all, by coming to Window, Workspaces, and setting the default workspace. Now this is gonna mean that we're all looking at the same layout in Final Cut Pro, so it's gonna be a good place to start. And the first thing we're gonna do is just disable this background clip for the moment. And that just means that when we now add our type to the timeline, we're gonna be able to just see that type and then we'll have a look at the color treatment for that background in a little bit. So we are gonna come up to the type and generators at the top left here, and we're gonna come down to the build in and out option here. And in here, we've got this custom option which allows us to add type, but also then to set some animation parameters for that type without using any keyframes. Really neat little feature in Final Cut Pro. So we'll drop this down to the main timeline. And we're gonna go ahead and add in a type for our animation. So I'm gonna come up to the top and we will add in a little headliner type for this film review. We will add in the stars on the next line. So I'm gonna hold down Control, Command at the same time and tap the space bar. And that is gonna bring up my emojis panel. So in here, we can just search for star and you'll get a few different stars that you can use. We're gonna use this kind of classic five-pointed star, and we can just double-click this five times uh, to have our stars, and then we can close that. Not gonna worry about the fact that these are almost touching. We'll use the tracking to actually space those out, and we'll type in a little fake movie title here. So we're gonna run through and just kind of give each of these lines of type a little bit of a different treatment. So for the movie title, I'm gonna select that. We'll make this bold. We'll increase the size of this a bit, and I'm then gonna just scroll down here to the face, and we'll have a look at the face color. We'll select a different color for this. So I'm gonna select a nice and a rich blue. We're gonna make our background red. So I want this to be a complementary color to that red that we're gonna choose. I'll close that for the moment. We'll scroll back up. I'm gonna select my stars, and then we will come either to our color picker here to pick out a yellow that we want to use, or we can click on the color box to select a yellow. I've got one that I've already set up here. And we're gonna give this three out of five stars. So I'll scroll back up and select stars four and five, and we're gonna make those gray. So again, you can see I've already kind of set up a gray there for that. And then for this line of type, we're gonna increase the star size, and then just use the tracking to bring those apart a bit. And also, when we use the line spacing, when we increase the line spacing for this line, it's gonna move apart that next line. So this is gonna be the gap between the movie title and my stars. And then we'll select this line, and we'll increase it so it matches the width of that movie title. And again, we can also go to the line spacing and just separate that out. So we have our type set up. If we play this through, you can see there's no animation in there yet. And this is where we're gonna dive in and animate this without using keyframes. So I'm gonna come up to my type options here, my type and generator options, and we'll just move this up to the middle here. And in the type and generators options, you can see we have all these options for in and out. So basically this is where the type is gonna begin or where it's gonna end. So this in position, if we come back to the beginning of our clip here, our type clip, this in position is where it's gonna begin. I'm gonna leave that as zero. This in scale is where the size is gonna start. I'm gonna actually have this increase in size a little bit. So we'll go down to 42%. The in tracking, we can actually increase that a little bit. And the in blur, we're gonna push this up. And also the in opacity will drop this right down. So basically, we'll do that in a minute, otherwise we won't be able to see the other change we make. But basically this is gonna mean that that's where we start with our type. And then we have some options down here for the in sequencing. So we're gonna have it run from this particular value, so the values I've set up here, and then we're gonna have it run by character. 
And we can choose the different options here as well, so by line or all or custom. So that's basically going to change the way that it animates. And then we can also adjust the spread as well. So the spread is going to be the number of characters in this case that will be animating in at the same time. And then we've got our direction of forwards, backwards, and so on and so forth. So some other kind of variables there as well as being able to ease in and ease out the animation. We're going to leave that as a constant animation. And then we've got some invariance as well. So we can have a little bit of randomness in there. And then we've got our in duration. So we can stretch that up so it takes a little bit longer. So you can see now when we animate on, we get this nice little animation on and we can modify that as well. So if we drop down our opacity, you can see now we have a little bit of movement because of our tracking and then we also have that kind of nice fade in of each of those bits of type. So sometimes the timing for this is a bit fast. We can also kind of have it so that each of these characters animates on one at a time. So a bit more of a sequence. And then in order to really kind of control the speed of this, we need to wrap it up into a compound clip. So I'm going to come to this clip here, do Option and G, and that is going to wrap this title up into a compound clip. And what this means is I can come to the beginning. I can look at the animation of that. It's quite quick, especially the kind of stars in the middle there. And I'm going to use my range tool. So I'm going to come to my range selection tool. I'm going to select the beginning of this compound clip. And I'm going to then come up to the retiming options here and we will slow this down. So we'll slow this down to 50%. So you can see now when we play this through, we get a nice animation of that onto the screen and we can slow it down even more. So you can see here we get a nice level of control over this animation. We can obviously speed it up again. Or we can find things like the stars here where it seems super fast and select a range specifically around that part of the video where we might want to slow it down even more. So we'll slow that down to 25%. You can see we're fast and then we slow it down and we can really control the speed in those different sections. So that's basically how we can use the custom tool to animate on our type. And then if we want to add an animation at the end of this, then we can come to the end. I've just come back one frame from the end by using the left cursor arrow. And then we'll come up to our options here, but we'll need to double click into our compound clip to make this change. So actually we'll come to the end here, then back one frame. And I'm going to change my end opacity to zero. So basically when this finishes, then one by one, these are going to fade out. And I might change my out duration as well. So it's a little bit quicker. And actually for the out option, I'm going to change this. So we have a slightly different animation. So we'll do the out animation by line. And what that's going to mean is that we blur these out one at a time. We'll come back. So you can see now we animate in just as we did before. And then we will animate out at the end of this. Now, if in this animation we don't have enough time kind of held on that one clip, we can come part way through here when we have our static text before it starts to fade out and do Shift and H, which is going to add a hold in there. And then we can have that hold last for as long as we want it to. So basically now we're going to hold there and then our animation out is going to begin. And we can trim that down to there. So you can see nice level of control over the animation at the beginning and at the end. Um, I also, in this clip, you can see there's a little bit of movement in the type. So actually what I've used for that is really simply under our cropping options for this clip, the Ken Burns option. And basically that will then allow me to play that through and we get a little bit of movement throughout that entire clip so the text is never completely static even when we have the hold there we still get that nice kind of zooming in movement for the text which is nice it keeps a little bit of animation in there we'll come out of our crop options here 
our Ken Burns option just by clicking the crop tool again. And then we can click our background and tap V to turn that on. So now with the background here, you can see that there's a lot of high contrast in there. So it's fighting a little bit with the, the foreground image. So what I often like to do in this instance is come to my color correction for that video in the background. I'm gonna increase the darker areas of my image, drop down the lighter areas and the midtones. And basically that's gonna kind of neutralize that, that image a bit. Okay, and we can make it lighter or darker and just find that sweet spot for when the video is still visible in the background, but also that it's gonna let that text pop out. So now I'm gonna come across to my effects on the right hand side and we'll use the colorize effect here. I'm gonna drop that right on here and you can see right away with the colorize effect, we get that nice kind of popping of the type and this is starting to look really good now. So let's play this through. So that nice little bit of movement in there, the fade out is looking pretty sweet. Perfect little type intro and you can see how we can animate that type without using any keyframes in Final Cut Pro. And also how we can use things like the emojis. So control, command and spacebar. And in there, we not only have the stars, but we have a really wide range of different emojis that we can use over the top of our video. So if you're wanting to do some infographics or any other kind of animation where you're showing some stats, so stars being the, the basic thing, then these emojis can be useful for that as well. So hopefully this is a useful little intro into how to use the custom type tool in Final Cut Pro and how to create this kind of review style little text animation. If you have any questions about this particular technique or Final Cut Pro in general, then do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.